was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. Anybody happy to be in the house of the Lord just one more time? Anybody come thinking about how good God has been and wanting to praise his name? If you came with the praise on your lips, just wave at me and just give him a shout of praise in this place. Oh, hallelujah, God, we honor you. God, we magnify you. God, we lift you high. this morning.
Now, I'll share something with you all that many of you don't know. Between January and Friday, my family has lost six family members. And so when I say I owe him praise because one, we know that all of them were saved and for that we're grateful. But the next song says, I won't let a rock cry out for me. Meaning when you go through something as traumatic as we've been through, you're, 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 you sometimes feel like, I don't, I, don't, I don't know if I wanna do this. I don't know if I wanna praise you, God. But in our hearts and in our minds and the team, because all of us is going through something, we have determined that we will praise him. And are there any praises in the house who have determined that even though you're going through, we, we in warfare, right? We just started learning about war and working through the war, that you were going to praise him anyhow. Oh, hallelujah. Yet will I praise him, my Savior and my God. Oh, hallelujah. Come on and just lift your hands and clap your hands in this place. Lift your hands in this place. Shout unto God because he's worthy. Oh, hallelujah, God, we honor you. Father, we bless your name. I can't deny what you've done for me. Loosed all my shackles and set me free. Rolled me and gave me the victory. I got a reason, a reason to praise. I can't forget what my eyes have seen. What seemed impossible, I believe. Look at my life, we got history. I got a reason, a reason to praise. I won't let rock cry out for me. I won't let rock cry out for me. No, no. I'll never let rock cry out. Come on, team, say I can't deny. Loosed all my shackles and set me
sometimes you gotta make it personal, family. You gotta, you have to remind yourself, no matter what turbulence I'm going through in my life, no matter what opposition, no matter what spiritual or physical attacks, I won't be silent. I won't let a rock. Jesus says, if you be quiet, the rocks will cry out. I came to tell somebody today, I will not let a rock cry out for me. Because when I think about the things that God has already done for me, he's worthy to be praised. Let, let me take it a little further. If he doesn't do anything else, he's still worthy to be praised. Can we give God some honor? Give God some glory? Give God some adoration this morning? Come on, family. I won't let a rock cry out for me. be silent. We're going to keep on singing. We won't be silent. We're going to keep on praising. So God, as we continue in our worship service today, help us never to forget you are always worthy of honor and praise. We say this prayer in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen and amen. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Family, now you just heard our praise team leaders say she has lost six family members already this year. We can't hear that publicly and just let her walk off the stage. Let me try on this side. We can't hear our sister say she lost six family members and act like we didn't hear that. So I want every praise team leader up here to surround her because we're about to surround her in prayer, amen? Amen? Can you please stretch your hands forward? Father, how we do thank you. God, we lift up Angela to you right now, Father. God, you know every family member that she has lost. But more importantly, you know the ones that are still here grieving, oh God. So we lift them up to you, oh Father. We ask that you would give them peace, a peace that surpasses all understanding, that would guard their hearts and their minds, comfort them like only you can. God, give them strength to carry on, oh God. And for everyone that is here, let there be, let, let their strength, let their faith, oh God, in you be a testimony so that those who don't know you, Father, would come to know the love that you have given, the peace that you have given, the joy that you have given them in the mighty name of Jesus. Let Faithful Central be her arms to hold her up, oh God. Let Faithful Central be a pillar that stands in the gap to keep her, to bless her as she pours out. Let us pour into her, oh God. And God, we'll be so careful to give you all the glory. God, we love you. We honor you. We thank you in Jesus' name. God, we come against every attack of the enemy, every weapon that has been formed against her. Now, God, we ask that you would cover my sister from the top of the head to the soles of her feet. 
guard and protect her mind right now in the mighty name of Jesus. Lord, weeping endure for a night, but joy comes in the morning. We ask right now, God, that my sister, even in the middle of all this weeping and grief and loss, God, that she would see that there's joy on the other side of this. Now, God, strengthen her body, strengthen her mind, so that she can do everything that you have called and ordained her to do. Lord, in the middle of this dark hour, we ask, God, that your light would shine through it in such a way that you would still get maximum glory. Now, God, use Angie to be a beacon of light in her family, but also, God, allow her to remind, remember that you count every tear that falls from her eyes. So, Lord, she does not have to hide her brokenness from you, God, but she can bring it to you so you can restore and recover and heal and sustain her to be the woman of God you've called her to be. Lord, we say thank you for Angie. Thank you, Lord, for this strong, mighty woman of God standing before us right now, God. We ask, Lord, that you would bless her and give her double for her trouble in the mighty name of Jesus. We ask, God, that this season of grief would not stifle any gift, any blessing, or anything you blessed her with in her life. Lord, we stand right now with her, beside her, interceding by prayer that she will move forward and her family will move forward to do and be everything you called her to be. We thank you. We love you. We say this prayer in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen and amen. Thank you, family. Thank you, family. The word of God says that when, when one part of the body is hurting, the entire body is hurting. And often, often, very often, ministers, pastors, worship leaders, we hide in our pain and isolate and sit in places of brokenness. So what we have just witnessed today is nothing but the grace of God, nothing but the power of God for our sisters. Help me praise God one more time. Help me praise God one more time. So the person next to you, it's time to give. Are there any cheerful givers in the house? Come on, praise God. Let's praise God. Praise the Lord, cheerful givers. Amen. And as you know, when we prepare to give, we always remember three things. We always remember first that we put God first, and then also we're cheerful givers, and God blesses us to be a blessing. Amen? Amen. Praise the Lord. If you need an envelope, just lift your hands, and usher will bring one to you. And as you're praising him, we continue to worship the Lord in our giving. There are three ways in which you can give. The first is all of you that are joining us online, you can click it. There's a link right now in the chat that you can click on. Or you can always go to our website at faithfulcentral.com. You click on the give button. There'll be a drop down menu where you tithe. You bring back to God what he's blessed you with. And then there's offering. And then you can also tithe and do offering at the same time. The second way in which you can give is you can text it. Text the word GIVE to 833-321-3222. And then the third way, I didn't say old school, but you can mail it to us or you can drop it off. Our address is 333 West Florence Avenue, Inglewood, California, 90301. Or as you see, there are giving receptacles that are right at the doors, those purple boxes. Amen? So now, let's pray over our giving and over our offerings. Let's lift our hands. Heavenly Father, Lord, right now, we thank you for the tangible gifts that you give to us. Right now, we're going through a series of spiritual warfare. Lord, right now, I pray that we put on the full armor of God, Lord, in our lives, Lord. Lord, in your word, it says in Isaiah 54 and 17 that no weapon formed against us shall prosper. I pray over that right now, Lord, that we move forward. And that we're good stewards over what you blessed us with, the time that you give us every day, the talent, the skill that you give us. Lord, the temple, our bodies from the top of our heads to the tips of our toes, and the treasure, our finances. Let what we do be pleasing in your sight. And let us grow and be the people you'd have us to be. Loving people, caring people, and sharing people. Lord, we say this prayer. In the name of Jesus and all the blessed people of God said... Amen. Let's give the Lord a hand of praise. Amen. Now I'd like to take a moment and just acknowledge all of our guests, 
new family members. If you're visiting with a family of champions, it's your first, your second, or your third time, can you just wave at us, or you may stand, just wave at us, just wave at us and keep waving. On behalf of Dr. John Paul Foster, First Lady Carmen, the entire family of champions, we want to welcome you here today. This is a Bible-based, spirit-led, Christ-centered church, and we pray that you learn some and you come back. And by the way, when you come back, you're no longer a guest. Now we consider you. Let's give all our family members a hand. And if you're online, just type in the chat where you're from in your city, and there'll be people there to greet you as well. Amen. So, hey, family, we have some announcements that we'd like to share with you. So let's look at a screen near you. Join Bishop Kenneth C. Ulmer and Kingdom Tours on a journey of discovery, heritage, and spiritual awakening. From October 12th, embark on a 10-day exposition to the heart of South Africa. Walk in the footsteps of heroes on a tour that takes you through the struggle and triumphs for freedom. Experience a cultural village that breathes the essence of South African heritage. Encounter the gentle giants at an elephant sanctuary in Hartby Sport. The journey continues to Cape Town with an unforgettable visit to Robben Island, a testament to resilience and hope, a world heritage site where Nelson Mandela was once held. This isn't just a trip, it's a pilgrimage to the soul of a nation, a chance to explore, reflect, and grow. For more information, simply click on the link in the chat, scan the QR code on the screen, or visit kingdomtours.africa. Your path to a life-changing experience awaits. Secure your place with us and witness the transformative power of South Africa. Praise the Lord, everybody. So if, if you haven't had a chance yet to, uh, and you're, you're really interested in, in going to South Africa with Bishop, it's gonna be a phenomenal time. They had a table outside uh, last, last week in the lobby uh, you can scan the QR code that's on the screen to get more information, or you can just go to kingdomtours.africa to get that information. But it would be a phenomenal time, a phenomenal trip. So if that's something you really, really want to do, then the information is right here on the screen. Amen? Yeah. Amen. Listen, I told you all last week that we uh, were praying for our youth and at the, the first mashup. I have an announcement. 996. <laughs> Let me say it one more time. This, this room, parking lot, building was full, full of you. Almost a thousand youth were in this building, praising God. That, that is unbelievable, y'all. Anybody take a math, they say just round it to the nearest number. So when I say we had a thousand people in here, just know 996 is closer to a thousand, amen? But about a thousand youth in here, my goodness. And it was, it was phenomenal. To be honest with you, it was, it was, it was almost overwhelming. We walked in here, and I had to take pictures and, and, and shots myself so I can keep this for 20 years from now. It was unbelievable what uh, our, our team has done. I went to the back where, where our, our youth are, back up to fifth grade, and I, they almost didn't have enough seats back here for the fifth grade. Fifth, you know, one, one through five. That, that doesn't, doesn't make sense. That is nothing but the grace of God. Can you help me praise God for what he is doing here? Unbelie unbelievable. And they had a great time. They had a really, really good time. So thank you for your support. Thank you for your prayers. I think y'all told your cousins, your aunties, everybody. Didn't. But they came and, and look, they, they were here standing at the altar at the end of service to have a relationship with Jesus Christ, y'all. That's what it's about. That's what it's about. That is what it's about. So we're trying our best to, to do outreach, to reach the community. And let, let me tell you something. They're responding. And they're coming. So we have to be prepared for what God is doing in this season. So keep praying, keep showing up, and keep trusting God. And listen, I, I keep telling people all the time, we have to be ready for people that ain't never been here before. Amen? But God is really, really doing something, and I'm so grateful for what God is doing. Also, uh, parents, students, those of you who, are, who are, uh, are, are looking towards going to school to do some type of a trait, now's the time. You have until, somebody say Friday. Friday. Somebody say Friday. Friday. It's going to be a good Friday if you turn that application in. I promise you, it's going to be a good, it's going to be a good Friday if you turn that application in. But please go to our website. Um, you have an opportunity if you're in school, you're going to school, you have kids who are, who, are, who are members of the church 
who are going to matriculate to college, we have a scholarship fund here that we, we really pour into our, our children's life here because we believe in education. We believe in helping our kids, our youth, go further than we did. Amen? And so if you have children or you, you yourself, you may want to go back to school. You may be a member here at Faithful Church. You may want to go back to school. You may want to, 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 to learn a new trade. Listen, now is the time. Allow us, allow the kingdom of God to invest in what God is going to do in the next season of your life. Amen? Amen. Amen. I mean, you, may, you want to do that. Also, I promise you that in this series of spiritual warfare, and the choir is coming. Amen. The choir is coming. In this, in this series of spiritual warfare, that we were going to go through each of the, wep- the, each of the armor of God that is our defense and our weapons that we use against the enemy in spiritual warfare, right? So this Wednesday at 7 a.m., we will begin to unpack each piece of the armor starting this Wednesday. It will be streamed on Facebook and uh, YouTube. You can see it. We'll start doing it then, and then we'll walk, work through it and see what God does. But anybody want to grow on the word of God? Yeah. Amen. So you want to do it Wednesday at 7 p.m. Tune in live on, on Facebook and YouTube. Somebody say, let's continue to worship.
Somebody shout, I've got victory. I've got victory. Come on, shout, I've got it. I've got it. I've got it. Good morning, soldiers. Welcome to the war. At ease. Last week, we learned that our fight is not against flesh and blood. It's spiritual. So today, let's look at one of our most valuable spiritual weapons, the sword of the spirit, which is, that's right, the word of God. Say you're battling temptation designed to derail you from your divine purpose. Draw your sword, Matthew 4. Jesus used scripture to counter Satan's temptations in the wilderness. Whether it's a lure of immediate gratification or a shortcut that veers off God's plan, the word of God is our spiritual weapon for defense and attack. Say you're battling a spiritual attack, coming through a hateful coworker, or a deceitful close friend. Draw your sword, Romans 12. Do not repay anyone evil for evil. If it is possible, as far as it depends on you, live at peace with everyone. Remember, vengeance is God's business, not ours. I know you want to help God out, but really, let Jesus take the wheel. God's got it. Your battle might be internal, you may be wrestling with issues of self-esteem and self-worth. Draw your sword, Ephesians 2.10. For we are God's handiwork, created in Christ Jesus to do good works, which God prepared in advance for us to do. God's handiwork translates from the Greek word poema, from which we get our English word poem. So, God's handiwork means that each of us is a crafted work of art made by God. You are made with a purpose, knit together in your mother's womb, as Psalm 139 tells us, crafted by the ultimate craftsman. I pray you see how effective your sword can be in battle. Soldiers, the battlefield is not optional. So if we stay ready, we don't have to, <laughs> that's right, get ready, you got it. Equip yourself daily with the sword of the spirit. Keep it sharpened, accessible, and ready for use. Remember, draw your sword. It's the weapon you need to secure victory in spiritual warfare. See you on the battlefield. Listen, we, I done got a word already. I, got, I done praised him, I got a word. Anybody got their sword? Come on, come on. So if, you, if you're visiting for the very first time or you're visiting in general, we're in a series titled uh, This Means War. We are intentionally wrestling with and going through uh, spiritual warfare. And uh, let me tell you something, the kind of week I had, pray for me twice. Anytime you uh, unpack the devil's schemes, know he's coming for you, amen. Just, he ain't just gonna let you learn about spiritual warfare and how to defend yourself against the enemy and just walk through the beach like nothing happened. So the enemy is mad, but that's all right, because I have a sword. Amen. But I really, I really want us, last week we, we, we looked at suiting up. We learned to suit up. At the end of the day, as believers in Christ and spiritual warfare, we have to suit up and put on the full armor of God so that we can withstand the attacks of the enemy. And we learned last week an important lesson 
that as believers, we must stand our ground. He tells us that the enemy is coming for us. And so what we must do is we must put on the full armor of God so that we can withstand the attacks of the enemy. He doesn't say if the enemy attacks. When the enemy attacks, we are to have on the full armor, not some of the armor, but the full armor of God so that we can withstand the attacks of the enemy. So last week we learned what it looks like to suit up. We looked at this means war, suit up. Today, this means war, strongholds. Let's pray. God, we thank you for your grace and mercy. We ask God that you would cover us from the top of the head to the soles of our feet. Lord, I ask that you would bind every distraction of the enemy, anything that would try to thwart the word of God. We ask God that the word would not go in one ear and out the other, but deep into our hearts to transform us into the men and women of God you've called us to be. Speak, Holy Spirit, in these times, this hour, give us ears to hear and eyes to see. Lord, we are yours. Reveal the enemy's tricks, traps, and schemes so that we can walk in victory and assurance in you. We say this prayer in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen and amen. Amen. If you have your Bibles, you can go to 2 Corinthians, 2 Corinthians chapter 10. 2 Corinthians chapter 10. We looked at suiting up. The word of God says we suit up because so that we can withstand, the word of God says, the schemes of the enemy. So we learned last week that the enemy comes up with plots and schemes drawn out to gain entrance or access into our lives. One of the illustrations that the Lord gave us was, was like the Trojan horse, that the enemy does not just gain access. Like if he knocks on your door and says, hey, I'm the devil, can I please come in and destroy your home? You wouldn't even let him in. But what the enemy will do is he'll disguise himself, the word of God says, as an angel of light. He's not an angel of light. But he dresses up evil so that he can gain access into our lives with the ultimate goal of tearing it down, destroying our lives. Now, Paul writes this letter, 2 Corinthians, he writes this letter, and when we get to chapter 10, it's revealed to us that the, the, the tone of chapter 10 is very harsh. In fact, it's, it's extremely harsh. We get to, to chapter 10, and Paul begins to speak, speak. In, in other words, so some of your headings in your Bible may say, uh, something to the, to the extent that Paul is defending his apostleship or he's defending his leadership or he is defending his ministry. Now, why would one of the, 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 the leaders that God had used to build the church have to defend himself? Now, he's defending himself because one of the attacks or tactics of the enemy was to diminish Paul's leadership. Are you with me? Now, they, they, they could not outright the, the now, and then tell you this. Now, th these, were, these were leaders in the church bringing his leadership into question with the ultimate goal of leading them out of the church so they can live a life contrary to the word of God. I gotta say it one more time. The, the, last week we looked at external attacks, external spiritual attacks, put on the full armor of God so that we can withstand the attacks of the enemy, the enemy coming at us from the outside trying to get in. This particular attack, attack that Paul is speaking of is not outside of the church. <laughs> you start the car. You've got the car state. This attack is not out there. The attack that he's addressing is, it is, is an attack that is taking place in the church of Corinth. And, and what, what, what happened was Paul, Paul realized that, in, in fact, if you read the beginning of the, of the, of the scriptures in, in verse 1 through 2, Paul says, I'm, um, I hope, uh, he calls himself timid and says, I hope that you, in other words, JP's translation, I hope that you get what I'm saying so that I can be, I don't have to be as bold in person as I am in writing. <laughs> and he begins to defend his authority, his leadership, in, in, in the church. Now, the reason why he was doing it is because the leaders had began to say that uh, Paul was two-faced, that his, his, uh, his, his, they brought his leadership into question, his apostleship into question, and Paul now is defending it. And what Paul does, he say, when, he, when he realizes, when he becomes aware of, listen, again, how 
It was leaders inside that were conspiring and trying to diminish who, who Paul was in his leadership. He said, wait a minute, wait a minute. Anytime we start fighting us, <laughs> it's spiritual warfare. Because how are the people of God that are supposed to come in unity and disunity is among them? So, so Paul says, listen to me, one of the tactics of the enemy, listen, when he when it's like this, he builds strongholds. Are you with me? He builds strongholds. So Paul says, listen, anytime the church is experiencing something like this, it is a spiritual attack and this means war. And in spiritual warfare, the first thing Paul teaches us is that, is that we must destroy strongholds. Look at verse 4. Look what he says in verse 4. He says, the weapons we fight with are not weapons of the world. All right? He says, on the contrary, they have divine powers, here it is, to demolish strongholds. Rewind the tape. Now, he says, the weapons we fight with are not weapons of this world. Are you with me? We're, we're not using uh, physical uh, artillery. All right? He says, what we're, what we're using, the weapons we're using are not physical, they're not material, they're spiritual. And these weapons we have have divine power. The gospel of Jesus Christ, the power of the Holy Spirit, the power and providence of God. All right? Cannot be thwarted by the enemy. Then he says in verse, in verse 5, we demolish. Watch this now. We demolish strongholds. Verse 5, he says, we demolish arguments. One more time. We demolish arguments in every pretension that sets itself up against, watch this, the knowledge of God. You hear that? We demolish any argument or pretension that sets itself up. Another translation says any loftiness and anything that would rise up over or above God. Listen, then he says, and we take captive every thought and we make it obedient to Jesus Christ. Are you with me? So the, the goal is, listen, we must destroy strongholds. And he says, we must demolish them and we must take them captive. You with me? Now, Paul uses warfare language. He's using warfare long language and he speaks of a battlefield. He speaks of strongholds and he speaks of weapons of warfare. Are you with me? God bless you. He uses battlefield, strongholds, listen, and weapons. But the battlefield, listen now, is not a battleground. It, it is not a physical, tangible, let's go to the battlefield and fight. No. The word of God reveals to us that one of the locations that the enemy has declared war against is mental, not physical. The, the battlefield that Paul is alluding to in this text is not on the ground, it's in the mind. Because the enemy wants to make our, our mind his playground. And the word of God reveals that what he'll do is he will build a stronghold, not on the ground. But one of his tactics is to build a stronghold in our minds. Are you with me? Now, th now th if that begs the question then, if the enemy's goal is to build a stronghold, and the word of God says we must demolish strongholds, what in the world is a stronghold? Are you with me? Now, I want to give you two types of stronghold. I want to give you a physical stronghold, and I want to give you a spiritual stronghold. Are y'all with me? Let's go. All right. A physical stronghold is, is, a, is a military fortification. All right? Military fortification. In fact, let me, let me, let me, let me come over here and, and teach a little bit. All right? So a stronghold, as you can see, is a strong military fortification. So now, what's a fortification? You ask great questions on a Sunday morning. Fortification is a military construction designed for the defense, watch this, of territories in warfare. Don't miss this. And it's used to establish rule in peace times. Hold on. A stronghold, watch this, is a building or a structure that is, a, it, that is safe from attack. I have to say this one more time. The enemy wants to build a stronghold in our mind. Are you with me? But a physical stronghold 
is a fortification that has been built that is safe from attacks. Somebody's going to get it when they go to brunch, I promise you. Now, look at what David said in Psalm 99. Psalm 99, he says, the Lord is a refuge for the oppressed, a stronghold in the time of trouble. So he reveals to us that a, 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 a stronghold, the purpose of a stronghold physically, has always normally been a place of refuge, right? A place where people can go and seek a place that they will be safe from attack. It's a place of refuge. So if I'm oppressed or I'm being attacked, if I can get to a stronghold, I'll be in security and I'll be secure from my attackers or my enemies. And Paul says, listen, he calls God a stronghold. That when my enemies are after me, David says, I, I, the person or place I need to get to is not just a physical location, but I, because when he was, on, when he was uh, you know, going towards being king, he actually hid in strongholds. When the enemy was after him, David hid in strongholds and it saved his life. But he, re he, re he realized, that, realized that God was the one who is a stronghold. That if my enemy is coming after me and God has his hand on me, there is nothing the enemy can do. Because the enemy does not have the power to take me out of God's mighty right hand. And so if the enemy is trying his best to attack you, but you are in the hand of God and his hand is on you, there is nothing the enemy can do to get you out of the hand of God. At least two or three people ought to help me praise God for that. Because God is a place of refuge. When the enemy is attacking you, when the enemy is after you, David said, there's a place you can go. And God will be your fortress. God will be your stronghold. God will be your place of safety. He didn't say the enemy wasn't coming. But he says when the enemy does come, the Lord is a stronghold, a place of refuge. Now, please don't miss the fact that a stronghold normally is a place that we're safe from attack. All right. Safe from attack. A stronghold is a location that is normally agreed to be a place that is safe from attack. All right. Physical stronghold. Now, what is a spiritual stronghold? Now, th this has been derived from what the word of God says in 2 Corinthians 10. A stronghold is, let's see. This is what a physical stronghold looks, but a spiritual stronghold, watch this now. A physical stronghold is a stronghold, it's a, it's a physical military fortification, a place that's, that's a, pl a place of peace. Now, a spiritual stronghold is a place that, that sets itself up against the knowledge of God. Say it one more time. A spiritual stronghold is every argument, every thought that goes against who God is. Say it one more time. A physical, a spiritual stronghold is different. A, according to this text, the word of God says we, we, that we must come against every argument and every thought. So a spiritual stronghold is a, is a place, watch this, that arguments and lies have been built. All right. I'm trying my best to teach this. A spiritual stronghold, according to this, word, this text, is a place where the enemy has built a lie or an argument or a thought that goes against God. Listen, and the enemy does this because if he can change the way we think, he can change the way we act or behave. So he builds lies in our mind so he can get us to walk contrary to what God's word actually says. Y'all don't believe me? Let's go to the garden. Genesis chapter 2, right? Adam and Eve, this, this is what God says in Genesis chapter 2, verse 17. Just pay attention. It's what God says. But you must not eat from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, for when you eat from it, you will certainly die. Another translation, you will surely, you will surely die. This is God speaking. I'm going to read it one more time. 217, 217. But you must not eat from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, for when you eat from it, you will certainly or surely die. Chapter 2. Now, go ahead and just scroll over to, turn the page to chapter 3. Now, that was God speaking. This is the devil speaking. You shall not. 
surely die. Genesis 3, verse 4. Pay attention. God said, if you eat from this tree, the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, you will certainly die. You will surely die. Surely you will die. You get to chapter 3. The enemy says, you will not surely die. The serpent said to the woman, watch this. He, now he's going to build an argument. But I don't believe him. Go to, go to, go to verse 5. For God knows when you eat from, from it, your eyes will be opened and you will be like God, knowing good and evil. Are you with me? Now, here we go. We know that, that, that an argument was built and a stronghold had to be in place. Why? Because the word of God says in verse 6 that she, the, the woman saw that it was desirable and pleasing to her eyes, so she ate it. Her actions went contrary to what God said because she believed the argument of the enemy and it built a stronghold that allowed her to eat the fruit. Because an argument is something that is built up that gets us to move contrary to the word of God. And she does exactly what God tells her not to do because she believed the enemy's lie. Now, I hate asking good questions on a Sunday morning, but I must do it. What lie of the enemy have you believed? What lie? Now, I got to look up. Has the enemy got us to agree with? Don't miss this. Because the enemy's goal is to build arguments and strongholds and thoughts that become strongholds that go against everything that God has called us to be. Are you with me? Everything that God has called us to be. Now, what's interesting is he says that we must demolish strongholds. Hold on. But normally a stronghold would be a place that was safe from attack. A place of refuge. But Paul is saying, I want you to demolish this stronghold. Isn't it, inter isn't it interesting that the enemy hides his lie in a stronghold? <laughs> a place safe from attack. He... He puts his stronghold in a place in your mind that you'll agree with it and leave it. Y'all don't want to pray with me. Because a stronghold is normally a place that's safe from attack. So when we believe lies that the enemy tells us, we just leave them in our mind. Safe from attack. Paul says, no, anything in our mind, any argument that comes up against who God is, what God is, or who his word says we are, we must demolish it. Right? That's when I learned this. In spiritual warfare, we must destroy every argument that goes against the word of God. One more time. In spiritual warfare, right, every in capitalism, we must come again. We must demolish every argument that comes up against the word of God or who God is. Now, verse 5 says this. Go to verse 5. Verse 5 says, we demolish arguments and pretensions that set itself up against the knowledge of God, and we take captive every thought and make it obedient to Jesus Christ. Now, Paul says, since the enemy has built a stronghold in our mind, we must demolish it. Why? Because some, sometimes, let, pray with me, sometimes, we believe the lie of the enemy. When the enemy says that you're, you're not good enough, you believed it. When the enemy told you that God didn't love you, you believed it. When, God, when the enemy told you this isn't going to work out, you believed it and you were anxious. You believed it and you, 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 you were you worried. See, sometimes we believe the, the lie of the enemy and it impacts us not only mentally, but sometimes even physically. You know, you can get you can worry so bad that it doesn't just impact your mind mentally, but it impacts your body physically. You can have stomach pain from worrying. You can have ulcers from worrying. There is something that the enemy can do in your mind where you you look like what you're going through. And the word of God says, we must demolish every single one of them. Now, let me see if I can help you. He says demolish. Demolish is the word katharao. Katharao, right? To destroy completely by tearing down or dismantling to destroy, to tear down destruction. All right? So listen, Paul, Paul is saying that when the enemy built, when the enemy brings a lie to us, when the enemy brings an argument to us that contradicts God or contradicts his word, it is our job 
to demolish it, to dismantle it, to destroy it. Now, here's the problem. Instead of demolishing arguments, we don't do a demolition, we do a renovation. Right? Instead of doing a demolition, we do a renovation. Now, you know what a renovation is? Now, there's a difference between renovation and remodeling. Now, a renovation is when you update an, an existing structure, right? You make, you make cosmetic changes, right? You, you keep the existing structure, right? But, but, but you just make some cosmetic changes to the lie that's already there. It, let me just dress up the lie a little bit. You know, you, you, go in your, you go in your bathroom and say, you know what, it'll be really, you know what, I should just, I should, up, I should update this and add to the structure. I'm, I'm going to put some tiles over here. I'm going to get rid of these, 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 these drapes, these curtains, and I'm, I'm going to put a sliding door right here. Right? But you have the same structure, so all you're doing, you're building on the lie that's already there. Right? You're doing a, a renovation, you're not doing a remodel. Now, remodeling involves changing the structure through demolition or construction, right? The, the problem we have is God has told us to demolish the lie of the enemy and he's tricked us into dressing up the lie. So we, we'll, we'll operate uh, um, in a form of godliness. I'm in trouble now. But a form of godliness isn't godliness itself. It's a form. It's a, an appearance of something that looks godly because you got the Christian language and you speak Christianese. But Christianese ain't easy when you got to confront God to his face and he realizes, depart from me, I never knew you. I'm trying not to preach this morning. But the enemy will build strongholds. Listen to me. And, and have, you, have you ever wrestled with a thought in your mind that went against God and, and you tried to do some work over here and the lie was over here and instead of, instead of, instead of demolishing the lie, you just said, I, I need you to sit right here today so I can get through this for the next few hours. And after you did the work that you're supposed to do, you come back and you wallow in self-pity, laying on the line. We were not called to, to, to renovate or dress up the enemy's tactics, no. God says, I need you to destroy everything that goes against what I have said I am and what I've said you are. You are beautifully and wonderfully made. So get every lie of the enemy that says you're not beautiful, that says you're not wonderful, that says you do not have what God has called you to be, and call it into obedience to Jesus Christ. Don't move it and dress it up. Demolish it so that nothing is left and build a new structure called the Word of God and stand on His Word, stand on His promises, stand on the foundation that is Jesus Christ. He says demolish it. And the enemy will get us to believe lies. What if God says demolish every argument? Then he says, we should take captive, don't miss this, take captive every thought and make it obedience to Jesus Christ. That's when I learned, listen to y'all, not, not only must we demolish every, 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 everything that comes up against God, but we, we must destroy any thought that goes against God. We must demolish any thought that comes against God and we must take captive anything that comes against, against God. Now, Paul reminds us, listen, that we're fighting against everything that is contrary to what God's word says. Listen to me. The enemy will try his best to get me, you, all of us to believe a lie. He, he tries to plant seeds in our minds that go completely against what God says. Sometimes he tries to put a thought in our mind Regarding sin, it says, well, everybody's doing it. Is it really that big of a deal? You shall not surely die. Sometimes he will tell us who we are not. You think God can use you? Now, of all the people in the world, you think God is going to use you. He'll build a, a stronghold in your mind, thought that, that we must take captive. Because God, I don't know anywhere in Scripture that God used somebody that was perfect. If your name ain't Jesus Christ. 
right? So every, every thought that comes up against who God is or who he says we are, we have to, the word of God says, take it captive. Now, to take captive in war, it means to gain complete control of. You hear me? To take complete control of, watch this, and, le watch, and lead the enemy away and make it a prisoner. So in, in war, to take, to take somebody captive, it meant to, to, to take the person captive and lead them away and make them a prisoner. Paul, Paul says every thought that goes up against who God says we are. Listen, we, we, we don't pick it up and, and move it somewhere else. We're to lead it away. Lead it out of your mind and take it captive as a prisoner to be obedient to Jesus Christ. You hear me? So we can't walk around believing that the enemies lie and not taking captive every thought that goes against who God says we are. My prayer for us is that we would have enough sense that every time the enemy tells you something that isn't in the word of God, anytime he tries to tell you who you aren't that the word of God says you are, that you take that thought captive immediately. Because if you allow that thought to stay, it's going to grow roots in your mind and it will, it will be, it, your, the way you live your life will be based on the lie that the enemy has told you. Why am I always afraid when the word of God says I'm fearfully and wonderfully? Why, why, why in the world would I be living in fear when the word of God says only be strong and courageous? Because the enemy has allowed us to be afraid of things when we shouldn't be afraid. Now, now the word of God says we should take everything captive because the word of God wants us to know whose we are and who we are. And my prayer for us this morning is that we will not leave here this morning letting the, the, the thoughts that the enemy has placed in our mind to stay captive, but I want to call every single one of them into obedience to Jesus Christ. I pray right now that every thought that came against every person in this room and online, that we will call it into obedience to Jesus Christ. Every lie, every scheme, every trick, everything the enemy has used from your childhood to now, we bind it right now in the mighty name of Jesus. I will not be what the word of God says that I'm not. I will be everything that the word of God says that I will have. I will be. Now let me see if I can help you. Somebody say, I am. I am, I am a child of God. I am redeemed from the hand of the enemy. I am forgiven. I am saved by the grace through faith. I am justified. I am, justified. I am, sanctified. I am sanctified. I am new. I am a new creation. I am, a new creation. I am partaker of his divine nature. I am redeemed from the curse of the law. I am delivered from the powers of darkness. I am led by the Spirit of God. I am a son of God or daughter of God. I am kept in safety. I am getting my needs met. I'm getting all my needs met by Jesus. I'm casting all of my cares on Jesus. I am strong in the Lord and the power of his might. I am doing all things through Christ who strengthens me. I am an heir of God and a joint heir with Jesus. I am heir to the blessings of Abraham. I am observing and doing the, law, the Lord's commandments. I am, doing the Lord's I am blessed coming in and I'm blessed going out. I am an heir of eternal life. I am blessed with all spiritual blessings. I am healed by his stripes. I am exercising my authority over the enemy. 
I am above only and not beneath. I am more than a conqueror in Christ Jesus. I am establishing God's word here on earth. I am overcomer by the blood of the Lamb and the word of my testimony. I am overcoming the devil. I got to say that twice. I am overcoming the devil. I am overcoming the devil. One more time. I am overcoming the devil. I'm walking by faith and not by sight. I am not moved by what I see. I'm casting down all vain imaginations. I am bringing every thought into captivity. I'm being transformed by the renewing of my mind. I am a laborer together with God. I am the righteousness of Christ. I am an imitator of Christ. I am the light of the world. I am the blessing, the blessing the Lord. Oh, watch this now. I am blessing the Lord of all times, and his praises will continually flow out of my mouth. I got to say it one more time. I am blessing the Lord at all times, and his praises will continually come out of my mouth. Faithful Central Bible Church, I came to declare war against the enemy, that I will be everything that the word of God says that I will be. I know who I am. I know what I am. I know whose I am. And I came to declare war against the enemy today because I will not be who God says I won't be, but I will be who the word of God says that I am. Is anybody willing to celebrate God this morning because we know who we are because I am everything that God says that I will be? Can we just praise God for about four seconds in this place today? Because I'm casting down every main imagination that goes against who I am in Jesus. Lord, we bless your name right now in the name of Jesus. We lift your name up right now in the mighty name of Jesus. Sometimes, family, we have to remind ourselves who we are in God. God, we thank you right now for your word, God. That is a lamp unto our feet and a light unto our path. God, we come together right now in this place in cyberspace, declaring, God, that we are going to pull down every thought, every argument, make it captive and obedient to Jesus Christ. We pull down every stronghold, every lie, every abuse, everything that the enemy has tried to do to cause us not to see ourselves the way that you see us. But God, we stand here today reminded of who we are according to what your word says. So God, today we drew our sword, the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God, and we declare war against the enemy. Now God, protect every person's mind in this place today. Cover them from the top of the head to the soles of our feet. Help us, God, that as we walk in the places that you've called us to be in, that we will always remember what your word says about us. So, Lord, we thank you. We ask right now, God, that you would transform our minds, renew our minds right now, Jesus. And, God, from our brother and sister, who knows the lie that they have believed for years. We cast it to you right now, God. We demolish every argument. That's right. You know what it is. If you're in this room right now, thank you, Holy Spirit. If you're in this room right now, and you have been struggling with a lie that the enemy has told you about yourself that is contrary to what God's word says. I want to pray for you. Just raise your hand right where you are. I see your hands. I see your hands. I see your hands. I see your hands online. You can raise your hand if you'd like to, or you can inbox us. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Father. God, for every hand that is raised, God, 
We thank you right now, Lord Jesus. Because a hand raised has acknowledged a stronghold that the enemy has placed in our life. We ask right now, God, that you would give us the courage, the boldness to demolish every lie, every argument. Demolish it, God. Help us not to try to dress up the lie. Help us not to accept the lie, God. Help us right now by faith to demolish every lie so that we can walk free from the bondage of this stronghold. Lord, I ask that there will be testimonies that will come back that would declare when they demolished this stronghold, they went further in their life. That I ask right now, God, that a peace would rest upon them as they've acknowledged that this stronghold has been living there. As they demolish it right now, God, I ask that they will walk in freedom. I ask God that every time the enemy tries to remind them of this lie, that they make it captive and obedient to Jesus Christ. So Lord, we thank you for your grace. We thank you for your mercy. And we thank you, Lord, that we can walk in freedom that only comes from you. So we thank you, God. We declare it done right now in the mighty name of Jesus. And we declare testimonies because the strongholds have been destroyed. We say this prayer in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen and amen. Amen, amen, amen. Anybody been blessed? Everybody standing, everybody standing. One of the places that the enemy attacks the most is our mind. And so my prayer for us as we leave here is that we never forget what the word of God says about us so we can walk in freedom and boldness and courage to be everything God's called us to be. So, Lord, as we leave this place today, we ask that your hand would cover us and protect us. We ask God that your spirit, the Holy Spirit, would empower us, enable us to live out this life of faith. We ask God that your word would be a lamp unto our feet and a light unto our path so that we can live a life according to your word, your will, and your ways. And Lord, we ask right now, Lord, that as we leave this place and go into this dark world, that our light would shine so great that when people see our good works, they'll glorify you, our Father in heaven. We thank you, Lord, that every stronghold has been demolished and we call it captive in obedience to Jesus Christ. We say this prayer in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen and amen. I love you, family. God bless you.